Good evening. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and coming to tonight's hearing to learn more about the city's proposed legislation. Legislation that will certainly make our streets safer for our biking community. So I want to thank you all for taking the time to coming down on such a hot day. It's good to be in air conditioning. Um, but again, it is certainly appreciative when you take time out to come and hear about legislation and to provide testimony that continues to share with us um, what we need to know and moving forward with legislation that's responsive and achieving what we hope the legislation will achieve, and that is safer streets. I want to start off by thanking the folks who've been working hard on this for about a year, I would say, and engaged in this legislation. I want to start with Randy Bowman, Assistant Director for the Department of Public Service, Leslie Strader, Environmental Policy Advisor, Scott Ulrich, a Healthy Places Program Coordinator, and Daniel Moorhead. I also want to acknowledge representation from the other council members' office, both Council Member Tyson as well as Council Member Klein want to share with everyone that the city has been working uh, with some of the stakeholders on legislation that will make our seats streets safer for bicyclists for over a year i'm certainly excited that we have legislation ready to propose that will do exactly what we hope it to do and as many of you may know safety is extremely important to me um, as we look at all of our legislation but among other things the legislation will also clean up the code by making it consistent with the state code and including gender neutral language. It will also give further protections to our biking community and also our safety officers. Their safety is our safety. I am proud to be a part of this transformation for our roadways, not only as a bike rider myself, but also as a leader in our city and making sure that Columbus is friendlier to bicyclists and also allows us to have really shared roadways. So without further ado, I'd like us to get started, and I would like to turn the floor over to Randy Bowman, again, our Assistant Director for the Department of Public Service, as well as Leslie Strader, our Environmental Policy Advisor. Thank you, Randy and Leslie. I believe you are ready, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Councilmember Mills. Uh, as you said, my name is Leslie Strader. I'm Policy Advisor with Mayor Coleman's Office of Environmental Stewardship. I'm joined tonight by Randy Bowman and Daniel Moorhead of the Department of Public Service. As you mentioned, um, about a year ago, we began working on this issue. We were approached by both Yay Bikes and Consider Biking that are the city's two primary bike advocacy organizations. Safety is especially important to us, especially for those road users that are most vulnerable. So when we were approached by this, we began by looking at both Cincinnati and Cleveland as examples. They have already passed uh, similar ordinance at the time we began this project. So we learned from their experience and with the mayor's support and that of city council, we began uh, drafting some language that we, uh, we addressed the issue of bike safety, as you mentioned, as well as uh, we brought city code into line with state laws and cleaned up outdated code. Stakeholders weighed in along the way as various drafts were updated and the final version was approved by the Transportation and Pedestrian Commission of the Department of Public Service, as well as their bike subcommittee. So Randy's gonna explain all the specifics in more detail, uh, but we look forward to hearing from you and also from the public tonight. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, thank you, Council Member Klein, uh, uh, Mill Mills for, uh, for the uh, public hearing this evening. Uh, we're very happy to bring forward to you uh, uh, this uh, draft legislation. I think just as a, as a perspective, um, it might be good to recall back to 2008 when City Council uh, adopted the Bicentennial Bikeways Plan. That really was a, a, a seminal moment uh, for the City of Columbus. Since passage of the Bikeway Plan in 2008, there have been several other pieces of legislation that Council has passed uh, to continue uh, uh, the furtherance of, of bicycle safety and bikeability in the city of Columbus. Uh, and uh, there was a bicycle safety helmet law that was passed by city council. Uh, there was uh, an ordinance uh, somewhat similar to the ordinance that is, uh, we're gonna be discussing tonight uh, that updated elements of, of uh, Columbus city code that was outdated, brought Columbus city code into alignment with uh, state traffic laws. 
uh, and then also uh, uh, strengthened requirements for uh, not only bikeways but also sidewalks on development activity and, and city capital improvement projects. So there's just been a continued momentum in uh, um, uh, improving the accommodation for bicycles uh, in the city of Columbus. Um, <clears throat> as as uh, council member, as you, as you summarized and as Leslie summarized further, there are really four uh, major elements to the proposed legislation, adopting best practice bicycling laws, uh, enabling uh, uh, the city to create more uh, bicycle parking, uh, the state law changes that have been referred to that need to be uh, uh, mirrored in Columbus City Code, and then various other code cleanup. Uh, I'm going to highlight the, the most, uh, 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 the largest, uh, most impactful portions of the legislation tonight as it pertains to the best practice bicycling laws. Um, the uh, a number, if you can read that on the screen, is 213103. That's Columbus City Code section. Uh, and this section is uh, proposed to be modified uh, to improve a bicycle safety from the aspect of motorists passing bicycles on the roadways. Uh, what is in the proposed uh, legislation includes a requirement uh, for motor vehicles and uh, code of transit buses to pass a bicyclist by no less than three feet, uh, and for commercial vehicles to pass a motor uh, to pass a bicyclist by no less than six six feet. Um, in Cleveland's uh, legislation has a, a three foot and a, and a six foot uh, separation requirement, and then uh, subsequent to an ordinance that uh, the ordinance that. Cleveland passed to create the three-foot and six-foot passing distance. They also granted a, a further exception to uh, transit buses so that transit buses uh, can, uh, because of the training uh, that is offered by the transit agencies, uh, that they can pass at a, at a lesser distance uh, than six feet. And then six, uh, Cincinnati has a three-foot requirement, but no six-foot uh, passing requirement for commercial vehicles and no transit exception. Uh, the next uh, major uh, component uh, to the legislation is uh, uh, revising uh, the code to clarify and strengthen the requirements on motorists who are passing uh, bicyclists to make a turn either to the left or to the right. Uh, uh, cyclists call that uh, right hooking or left hooking, uh, and that's not a good thing. That's a very uh, sometimes uh, uh, fatal and, and many times injurious. Uh, actions uh, where, where a cyclist uh, runs into uh, the side of, uh, of a vehicle that has not given enough distance uh, uh, between them and the cyclist as they overtake the cyclist to make their turn. Uh, so uh, what was done, uh, what was proposed in Cincinnati's and Cleveland's uh, legislation, we are uh, adding to this proposed legislation for Columbus. Uh, the next uh, highlight is uh, uh, also in uh, Chapter 2131, and um, I think this is a, a case of what is good for motorists is also good for bicyclists, and this is all about when you're approaching or being approached by uh, uh, emergency vehicles with lights on that you need to pull over and you need to act safely and be very mindful of, of those emergency vehicles and also road service vehicles uh, that are out there in, in the right-of-way. Uh, again, this is about safety. That's the, the title of this ordinance. Uh, the next uh, uh, section continuing in Chapter 2131 is uh, adding to uh, the ban on texting to not just motor vehicles but also Bicyclist. The gentleman that's riding his bicycle in this uh, video uh, is doing something that's not very safe. And uh, we uh, were proposing this be added to Columbus City Code. Uh, moving on to uh, Chapter 2173, um, there are several uh, service providers, uh, city and para city service providers that operate uh, on bicycles as a as a manner of, of performing their duty, and those are police officers. Uh, firefighters are more specifically paramedics uh, that provide uh, services, say, during red, white, and boom uh, emergency services. Uh, the, the Department of Public Service uh, parking enforcement officers and uh, uh, the Special Improvement District ambassadors that are trained uh, and uh, operate on city sidewalks downtown. Uh, we're proposing that the code be made clear that these and only these uh, um, uh, bicyclists, are adult bicyclists, are allowed um, to ride on, on sidewalks 
simply because they're performing their duties, uh, simply because um, it would be more dangerous for them to be riding in the street performing their duties, which is they're looking around, um, uh, looking for uh, uh, parking violations or bad guys or someone that is in need of, of assistance. Um, and so we want them to be on the sidewalks. They are trained uh, in proper bicycling uh, safety um, um, as part of their, their job duties. Uh, the next section is back to uh, 2131. Uh, this is looking ahead to the future uh, to enable the city to consider um, contra flow bike lanes on one way streets. So in other words, a bike lane that uh, directs uh, bicyclists in a direction opposite the flow of motor vehicle traffic on a, on a one way street. Uh, this is a tool that the city would consider uh, as it looks to implement the bikeway plan in the city. Uh, we do have one example that was a test case uh, that's on Milton Avenue up in Clintonville where the Olentangy Trail comes up to street level and crosses uh, um, uh, West North Broadway at Milton Avenue. And then, uh, as, I, as I said, there's, uh, um, just like in 2008, there is a need to update and refresh various sections of the code. When, when one examines city code uh, for one purpose, you might find an opportunity to clarify language or to clean up uh, references. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, with this ordinance, we're proposing to clean up um, some minor things like the definition of vehicles, uh, to make city code references consistent. When one section of city code refers to another section of city code, sometimes the reference section of city code isn't, uh, uh, is updated and we might need to change the other part that references that, city, that part of city code. So we found a couple of those and we need to clean that up so that the right sections are referenced by the right other sections in city code. Um, or, uh, this ordinance would also make uniform city code references to motor vehicle restrictions on bike lanes consistent with chapter uh, 2173 which is about uh, you can only park or stop in a bike lane if you're loading or unloading uh, uh, goods or passengers and that also applies to CODA. CODA should be able to pull over to the right, drop its passengers off uh, safely. And then uh, uh, lastly, um, making clear the prohibition of motor vehicles and shared use paths, sidewalks, and bike lanes. Um, in our review of the city code uh, pertaining to this issue, uh, it was not entirely clear that there indeed should be a prohibition, again, for safety uh, for motor vehicles riding on shared use paths, sidewalks, and, and bike lanes. And then just as in 2008, uh, there is a need to uh, update the Columbus City Code to match uh, state law changes, state law changes uh, from traffic code. And uh, I've listed here uh, uh, several uh, highlights. Um, we have um, various updates to traffic related definitions. You know, the city code and state law define many things, whether it's a vehicle, whether it's a, a crosswalk or an intersection. And those updates to those definitions at the state level need to be mirrored in Columbus City Code. Uh, in addition, um, uh, last year, uh, Ohio Revised Code was amended to uh, consider the uh, uh, use of new types of traffic control devices in the photo. Here you see what is called a pedestrian hybrid beacon. Uh, and it's uh, more or less a, a flashing red light uh, that could be installed at locations where, um, where design specifications are met that would improve the safety of pedestrians and, and cyclists uh, that would be crossing a street where otherwise um, a, a standard traffic signal would not be warranted or it may require something more than uh, just a, a yellow um, crosswalk uh, warning signs. If someone is, is interested in, in this device and in being installed in their neighborhood, they could certainly contact the city's 311 call center. Uh, uh, there are engineering criteria that have to be met for the installation of the pedestrian hybrid beacon. We're aware of some locations already that uh, we're considering in the city. One of them is on Bethel Road, uh, east of, um, east of um, Riverside Drive or Dublin Road. Uh, and uh, that would, if that's the first location, it'll be the first of its kind in the city. So undoubtedly there will be a, a need for some education and awareness as well. Then in addition um, 
to the uh, other state law changes. There was a, a change in state law uh, earlier this year uh, that allows a motor-driven cycle or a scooter to park on sidewalks. Uh, there was a qualifier in the state law change uh, that the engine must be 150 cc's or smaller, and it cannot impede normal flow of pedestrian traffic. Uh, Columbus City Code also requires that uh, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, 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 compliance must be met so someone cannot block a sidewalk with a cycle or, or with, a, with a motor scooter. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the, that code change at the state level allowed uh, greater uh, flexibility for motorcycles to park on the pavement. Namely, uh, code typically requires a vehicle to park parallel to the curb. Uh, the code change at the state level allowed motorcycles to park at an angle. Um, perhaps that would allow for, for more motorcycles to be parked in one parking space, which is legal in the city of Columbus. Uh, another element of the uh, uh, proposed legislation includes um, uh, an initiative from the city uh, to allow more in-street bicycle parking near intersections. Uh, we call these in-street bike parking corrals. We presently have three locations installed in the city, one in Old Town East and uh, two, uh, one downtown and one in the short north. I think they've all been well received. Uh, we would like the ability to install more of them. Uh, and we need the city code to be modified to allow the director of public service to, to uh, contemplate and have these installed. Namely, um, uh, there is a need, of course, for safety at intersections to be able to see around the corner. Uh, bicycles, you can pretty much see through, see around, see over. Uh, we don't think that uh, they pose the uh, kind of visibility um, interference that, say, a panel truck uh, would have at an intersection, so hence the the suggestion to modify uh, city code to allow for this um, innovative bike parking. And then lastly, um, uh, various code cleanup. Uh, uh, council member, you mentioned uh, gender neutrality. Anytime uh, our department um, uh, proposes amendments to city code, we like to modernize it and reflect that uh, uh, directors uh, can either be male or female, and that should be reflected in the city code. Uh, and then lastly, um, this is leveraging this uh, uh, piece of legislation uh, to uh, clarify uh, two elements in the city's parking code. This would be for on-street parking um, that uh, clarifies the restrictions regarding back-in angle parking. Uh, the city has a, has a, a location on Goodale Avenue uh, where back-in angle parking is allowed. Uh, and we need to uh, amend the code to um, make clear uh, what are the restrictions uh, for back and angle parking. Also clears up uh, uh, inconsistencies between two chapters, uh, two chapters within the parking code uh, that deal with how far from a curb are you to park and is your vehicle supposed to park parallel to the curb or can it be uh, at an angle to the curb? And we do have angle parking in the city and we need to amend the code so that we can um, stay legal. Uh, lastly, uh, and this has been acknowledged, but I don't think it's, uh, uh, it's never too much to, to acknowledge uh, the input from stakeholders uh, and interested parties and learned parties. Um, Council member, you said that this has uh, taken a while. Well, it's, it's uh, good things do take a while. And uh, without uh, the input from Yay Bikes Consider Biking, the LAB, the Commission, uh, the Bicycle Subcommittee of the Transportation Pedestrian Commission, and very important, uh, various city departments, whether that was the city attorney's office who kept us legal, uh, the Department of Public Safety who, has, who will be charged with enforcing, very important, uh, as well as public health. Uh, and without the help of, of your aides, uh, tonight would not be possible. And so we thank you. Uh, we look forward to uh, answering any questions uh, that you or the audience may have. Thank you, Director Bowman. Uh, you're correct. It is stakeholders and um, thinking recently of some of the other legislation moved, whether it was food trucks or taxi cabs, it's always good to have good stakeholder buy-in. It doesn't move as fast as people would like, but it is thorough and inclusive, and, and that's two things that you can hope for in, in legislation. I do have some questions sort of in your, your last statement. You mentioned a very important piece of this that I think I would ask that you would share both to our viewing and our present audience uh, the uh, methods of how this will be enforced.
so, um, like with a lot of traffic incidents, uh, if, an, if an officer is present to witness uh, the incident take place, then they were, are obviously able to cite on the scene. Um, but many scenarios, an officer arrives at the scene after an incident has already occurred, and in that case, uh, it takes interviews of the people who are present to witness the case to um, determine what exactly uh, unfolded and what uh, sections of code were violated at that time. Thank you. I, I want to uh, highlight um, that we've had un some unfortunate fatalities, and this is one of the outcomes I hope that we prevent future fatalities when it comes to bicyclists um, with the safe streets uh, legislation. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how um, responsibility for both the vehicles and the bicyclists to making sure we have safe streets. Um, those who are in vehicles may ask the question, if I am abiding by the passage of the three feet and six feet and I cross the double yellow line, am I now in trouble? And I'm trying to comply with one law, does that put me in trouble with the other? If you could clarify that for our listening present audience. Yes, so uh, just as in any time you're passing a slower moving vehicle, it is very important that you slow down, pause, and make sure that you're not um, going to uh, cause an oncoming uh, accident by uh, crossing that yellow line, which is allowable in the case of passing, uh, to get around the slower vehicle. Thank you. I want to highlight uh, one of the features, important elements of tonight's uh, ordinance that we're presenting the safe streets and that is those who are allowed to be on sidewalks this is not a an exception for no reason the exception is again a protecting of our safety for those who protect our safety and also the ambassadors and the special improvement districts who are allowed on the sidewalks this is not for anybody and everybody and all of that I think that um, the firefighters who are new on bikes have had training from the police department who ride bikes so they're well trained in navigating traffic, but this also allows them during our large events to get cardiac arrest equipment to those who are in need in a much faster way. In the past, um, just as an education note to the audience and the public, larger medic vehicles would need to park large crowds and that it takes time to get to someone and we are trying to increase our cardiac arrest survival rates and the bicycle uh, firefighters will help improve that and I think it's a step in the right direction for our division of fire to take a very innovative approach to saving lives and this ordinance will further support their work. In addition to that, our police officers who are trying to uh, prevent other incidents and in going forward, the, the sidewalk um, opportunity is also important for them but I still encourage folks, whether they're on the sidewalk or not, to move out of the way as if they were in the street so that they can get to those who are in need. Um, if you could share a little bit with me, Director Bowman, as it relates to other things that we're doing to promote safety from the bicyclist side of the world, um, ensuring that the bicyclists are abiding by rules as well as the vehicles. It is about protecting bicyclists, but I think the laws that the bicyclists have to abide by will also keep them safe as well. So if you could touch a little bit about outreach as it relates to their safety. Sure thing, thank you, council member. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the city has uh, uh, engaged over the years in a share the road campaign uh, that uh, uh, features not only education about the types of, of bicycle facilities uh, that are becoming visible in the city of Columbus, but also about safety. And uh, last year, uh, the city rolled out uh, its most intensive Share the Road campaign yet uh, that featured billboards and banners. Uh, some of the banners may still be up. And uh, uh, as well as public service announcements that are still available on the city's website. And we encourage uh, our, our listeners to uh, visit uh, the city's website to look at the public service announcements about biking safety. Um, we've been uh, partnering with ODOT over, the, over these years, actually since 2008, uh, on, on improving bicycle safety, getting the message out through these various forms of media, uh, through events. Um, uh, the uh, uh, city uh, has received grant funding from ODOT uh, from its highway safety program to further 
uh, the messaging on safety and safe operations, and we partner quite quite strongly with with the Ohio Department of Transportation on that. Thank you. I think it's important. I'm going to uh, raise the, um, and if you could help me elaborate that some of the changes in the code are the result of state law changes, particularly as it uh, relates to motor scooter parking and motor driven cycles being able to park on sidewalks. Um, these changes, again, are part of state law changes that we must clean up our own code. And I want to highlight again, the parking must must be ADA compliant. That's extremely important. And, and Director Bowman, would you elaborate on that for me just a touch? Yes, thank you, Council Member Mills. Uh, as you said, uh, there are elements in this, in this legislation that uh, uh, we, we must do, we're compelled to do a state law, state traffic law changes, and we have to roll those uh, uh, changes into Columbus City Code. Uh, the same thing was done back in 2008. Uh, to your point, uh, that uh, uh, parking on, on sidewalks, while it is uh, now allowed by state law, uh, it is proposed to be uh, incorporated into city code, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that does not alleviate the operator of that motor scooter, of that motorcycle, uh, their responsibility to ensure safe passage uh, of pedestrians and, quite frankly, our uniformed officers that may be riding their bicycles on sidewalks in con conduct of their duties. Uh, that they have a responsibility. And uh, the city, as well as the state, is required to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act, which, which gives very specific guidance as to what is a passable uh, uh, distance, a safe width uh, on sidewalks, and that has to be followed. Thank you very much. Uh, Randy and Leslie, Leslie, you have any closing comments before I move on to Scott? Um, I'd like to ask Scott Erwick, Eric, I'm going to get that right. Uh, the Healthy Places Program Coordinator for the Department of Health to share some information with us. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Mills, for hosting this uh, public hearing on this important piece of legislation. Um, I also want to thank the Mayor's Office, uh, the Department of Public Service, all of our bicycle advocates and everyone who came out tonight um, uh, for all their hard work uh, to create this ordinance. Again, my name is Scott Ulrich, uh, and I'm the Healthy Places Program Coordinator at Columbus Public Health. Uh, our mission at Columbus Public Health is to protect health and improve lives. Uh, and I'm here this evening to tell you why Columbus Public Health supports the Safe Streets Ordinance. Uh, in Franklin County, two-thirds of adults are overweight or obese, and only one-third get the recommended amount of physical activity. But bicycling is healthy. Uh, it increases physical activity, improves both physical and mental health, and it reduces obesity. And because transportation is a routine in which we all engage, uh, bicycling has great potential to increase our levels of physical activity and help reverse uh, current obesity rates. So one of our goals is to get more people biking in Columbus. Uh, but time and again, we hear that safety is a major barrier to people making this healthy choice. Uh, people are interested in biking, but they're concerned about their safety. This Safe Streets Ordinance uh, fits a crucial role in an integrated package of infrastructure programs and policies uh, to make cycling safer and increase ridership. Uh, infrastructure goes a long way to pr protect cyclist safety, but alone it's not enough. Uh, programs like Bike to Work Day, the Share the Road campaign, and uh, the Kogo Bike Share system uh, raise awareness of bicycling and also increase the effect of it effectiveness of these investments in bicycle facilities. And this ordinance creates a legal framework to protect bicyclists and establishes a less arbitrary passing standard, all of which will go a long way in addressing these concerns uh, of prospective cyclists and getting them riding, which is important because we know that just getting more bikes on the road can create a positive cycle of safety for everyone uh, because higher rates of bicycling actually results in lower overall crash rates for all road users. And so I urge City Council uh, to adopt the Safe Streets Ordinance because safer streets create healthier communities and healthier communities lead to better lives. So thank you for your time and your consideration in this matter. Thank you very much. You brought up two very important points, um, personal points, you're fine, and personal points that um, we, we as this Columbus City Council have made several 
a million dollar investments in sidewalks, not necessarily for bike riding, but to provide for opportunities for pedestrians to walk more and put our bicyclists in, in safe roadways. Um, I know that in, in some neighborhoods it's more of a challenge, but as you mentioned, Scott, the safer we provide the streets, the more activity we'll have and we will improve the health of our citizens. I know for a fact it has certainly improved my health. The more I ride, the better I feel. Um, and so I'm hoping to create safe opportunity, which again will increase in ridership and use of bikes, whether it's to go to work or school or to play. I think we are now at the point of the, my favorite part of a hearing, and that is the public testimony. It gives me another opportunity to hear from stakeholders and citizens alike in regards to the issue of tonight's hearing, Safer Streets. And so with that, I will begin with our first speaker. I will call two names at a time to ask that the uh, second name that I call is prepared to speak immediately following the closing of the speaker before he or she approaches the podium. Our first speaker is Catherine Gervis. Please state your first name and last name as you approach the podium. And after Catherine, I have Heather Bowden, if I am reading correctly. And I, I always give my disclaimer at my hearings to charge it to my head and not my heart if I mispronounce your name. Please forgive me and pronounce it correctly, if you will, and I will try to do better the next time. Um, Heather, if you will begin uh, prepared to speak after Ms. Gervis shares her comments for three minutes related to the tonight's hearing subject of Safer Streets. The floor is yours. Good evening, Council Member Mills. It is always a pleasure to be in your presence. Thank you for chairing this committee and for giving us an opportunity to speak on this topic tonight. My name is Catherine Gervis. I live at 258 North 21st Street, and I am honored to be representing the 512 members of Yay Bikes approximately two dozen of which are here with us this evening. Yay Bikes is thankful to you and to the other members of Columbus City Council for consideration of 1182-2014, the proposed Safe Streets Ordinance. If adopted, this ordinance helps to clarify appropriate interactions between motorists, bicyclists, and pedestrians, creating an even clearer commitment for safety and peaceful streets for all users in Columbus. The Yay Bikes Board of Directors is particularly pleased with the following components of this legislation. One, clarifying that a bicycle is a vehicle in the definition of vehicles and throughout the legislation. Two, clarifying that the law explicitly prohibits motorists from left or right hooking bicyclists. Three, clarifying that bicyclists are protected under the law from being doored by motorists. And four, affirming that motorists must pass cyclists at a safe distance and defining a safe distance as at least three feet for automobiles and six feet for most larger vehicles. We are particularly appreciative of the many opportunities provided to Yay Bikes and other advocates in the community of bicyclists to respond to earlier drafts of this legislation and for the thoughtful responses given to all comments. This legislation has clearly been influenced by those of us who ride the street on a daily basis. Thank you. We are here tonight to support this legislation and are excited about coming back to Chambers next week when Council is scheduled to take action on the proposed legislation. This ordinance is a wonderful step in the direction of creating peaceful streets for motorists, bicyclists, transit users, and pedestrians. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all of your uh, attention, input, and the gathering of all Yay Bikes. And every time I hear Yay Bikes, I just want to do that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a reflex. <laughs> Yay Bikes. <laughs> Probably something from my childhood when I was like, Yay, I'm riding my bike. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but thank you again for your input and your time and your advocacy on behalf of bicyclists. And I hope that you join me in saying to our citizens that we want safer streets for bicyclists. We want more bicycle riders, and I know that you share that thought. And also, um, I know that your membership uh, cares about those who have unfortunately um, suffered fatalities as a result of, of unsafe uh, vehicle operation around bicyclists. So thank you for your work, and please thank your membership, who I know some are present. You mind raising your hand, the Yay Bikes? Yay, yay, yay Bikes. It's a reflex. I can't explain that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Heather Bowden, please. 
Ms. Bowden, will you please state your first and last name in any organization that you may represent, and you have three minutes to share your comments and concerns related to tonight's hearing related to Safe Streets Ordinance. Thank you very much, Council Member Mills. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to um, let me show my support for this um, ordinance. My name is Heather Bowden. I am the general manager for Kogo Bike Share. Um, we launched at the end of July last year, um, and we are seeing wonderful success with our program. Um, the city has been so supportive of our program. Um, they, they actually are stakeholders, they are owners in this, and we work very closely with everybody in this room um, to make sure that all of our new members, all of our um, casual day pass members, are educated and do understand the rules of the road. Um, and this ordinance is a great step forward for the city of Columbus. I personally have lived here for 10 years and to see the change um, that is occurring within the city, um, providing these new transportation alternatives, providing the new infrastructure, um, this ordinance just helps bring us even further um, than we were before 10 years ago. And there's several components to the ordinance that um, I am very supportive of. Um, the three-foot passing law is something that um, I'm so grateful that we are moving forward. Um, as you stated earlier, we have seen it um, in other cities in Ohio. It is actually um, gaining momentum um, from a statewide level and a statewide legislative action. Um, so we're very excited about that as well. And it's great to see Columbus jumping on board uh, to further that as well. Uh, the other wonderful component to this ordinance is just the ability to have more infrastructure options, bicycle infrastructure options. Um, it allows the Department of Public Service more tools uh, to add to their toolbox. Um, and we at Kogo Bike Share are very supportive of that because as we're seeing our new members, um, some, who haven't ridden a bike in a very long time and are just now getting back into it, um, to be able to have that infrastructure that creates a safe place for them to ride is critical. Um, so thank you for letting me share my support. And um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You wouldn't happen to have membership numbers with you this evening. It's okay. Nine hundred and eighty-three annual members. Oh, you do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Silly me. Yes, we've actually seen over um, two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand miles ridden uh, over five times around the Earth. <laughs> um, Four million calories burned thus far from our users, and seventy-two thousand pounds of carbon emissions reduced. Well, that's prepared, aren't you? <laughs> but thank you. As a chair of the Environment Committee, all of those things are important, right, Leslie? So it's good to hear those numbers. And thank you again for coming to tonight's hearing. Thank you. Uh, next, I have uh, the next two speakers. I have Nathaniel Wilkins. If you will please approach the podium, share your first and last name in any organization that you represent. And just after Mr. Wilkins, I have Jess Matthews. If you will begin preparing to approach the podium, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, you have three minutes. Mr. Lathane George Wilkins, 1612 Arlington Avenue, also the chairman solely for vacant and abandonment property. My main concern is the safety for the uh, bicyclists at night. I know we have some uh, fatal accidents for the last couple weeks. And, you know, I just want to. Uh, just to say thank you, but there ought to be more done with vehicles, bikes on the road late at night, just coming from hustle and bustle from work. Um, again, um, just, they, they just need to be more done with special decals on bikes and clothes and things to let people know that these bicycles are out here that's traveling through morning hours and rush hour time in the evening. So again, I just want to say thank you and I'm strongly do support this. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. And as always, I can count on you to bring up another important topic that we need to highlight. We talk about the safety of the vehicles in regards to the bicyclists, but it is a very important note to talk about being visible at night for our cyclists. So thank you very much, Mr. Wilkins, for your comments. Again, Jess Matthews, please approach the podium. 
Please share first, last name, any organizations that you may represent, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council Member Mills, for bringing us to this point and for your continued leadership. My name is Jessica Matthews, and I'm on staff with Consider Biking and helped establish the Safe Streets Ordinance with assistance from Greg Listini of Bricker and Eckler and the support from Leslie Strader of the Mayor's Office. So I thank you both for your continued support. Our organization is in full support of the passing of the Safe Streets Ordinance. C Cincinnati, Cleveland, Toledo, and Bay Village have passed similar Safe Streets Ordinances. In 2012, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reported over 49,000 people riding bikes in the U.S. have been injured or in close to 730 killed. 70% of those injured and fatally hit occur in urban areas. Every one of us counts. The way that mothers, fathers, students, young professionals, and others are choosing to move around is changing every day. We are no longer living in a society where one mode is the only preferred mode. People want choice. As people continue to embrace wanting and seeking multiple ways to move around, not only should the infrastructure of our roads change to accommodate, so should our laws, as our laws are put in place so that society remains safe and civil. One of the many positives of passing the Safe Streets Ordinance is that it seeks to ensure when passing a person on a bike, drivers allow adequate common sense space to safely pass the more vulnerable people using the roads. <clears throat> Will this be difficult to enforce? At times. However, by joining the four other Ohio cities, people who ride in Columbus can at least have the legal framework to protect themselves in the incidence of being buzzed or hit from behind. In a report just published last month from the League of American Bicyclists, the highest collision types between motorists and people on bikes was hit from behind collisions at 40%. With having Ohio's capital city pass the Safe Streets Ordinance, we join the four other cities with a stronger unified voice in saying, we hear you, we see you, and we want everyone to reach their destination safely. The Safe Streets Ordinance is about safety. Safety is not exclusive, but inclusive. Should safe streets pass, I would also strongly encourage an aggressive education and enforcement campaign. As our cities continue to improve and promote bicycling, the passing of safe streets will be another step in the direction of changing behavior on our roads and encouraging and promoting safe and equitable streets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Matthew, for sharing your comments. and. I appreciate your input in the early uh, development of the legislation. I think we met about a year better ago. So thank you again for, for hanging in there with us. Again, I know oftentimes it doesn't move at the speed that we all wish it would, but that we get there. And that's the important part, and hopefully we get there in time to continue to make our, seats, our streets safe. The next two speakers I have are Ruth Milligan. Mulligan, maybe, that's a you. It's an I, Milligan, I had it right. Okay, Ms. Milligan, if you would please approach the podium, share your first and last name in any organization that you represent, and you have three minutes to share your comments on this legislation. After Ms. Milligan has, has finished her testimony, Mr. William Kohler, if you would please prepare to approach the podium. Ms. Milligan, you have three minutes to share your uh, concerns or comments related to the Safe Streets Ordinance. Great, thank you very much, Congress. Excuse me, Councilwoman Mills. Congress. Uh, my name is Ruth Milligan. I live at 265 Oakland Park Avenue. Um, and unlike the GM executives that flew into Congress, I did ride my bike here tonight as opposed to driving. I'm speaking tonight in favor of the proposed amendment to require the three foot clearance and six foot clearance when passing bicycles. So I'm here as a mom tonight and a bicyclist and a wife of someone who commutes. My husband has been commuting from Clintonville downtown for 20 years. Um, for many years, we only had one car, and that's his primary form of transportation. I sent him with the kids tonight and decided to be here myself. Because the story I wanted to share was about what happened on Mother's Day this year, which is the only thing I wanted to do was to bring my eight-year-old and 10-year-old on their bikes downtown to do some exploring, exploring 
between the Audubon and some favorite spots in the short north and to see their grandmother who lives at Neil and Goodale. But for several days before, we had this big tension between us about where it would be appropriate for our children to actually ride when they came downtown. And we came up with the solution that my husband woke up on Mother's Day morning at 6 a.m., drove his car to the corner of Goodale and Neal, rode his bike home back to Clintonville, collected all of us, we all rode downtown on the trail, parked our bikes at Goodale and Neal, where my mother lives, got in the car and drove around downtown to avoid my children having to ride on the busy streets. It is our desire to be able to ride both our, from our house to Whetstone Park from our house to Olympic Pool on High Street and in Enola as a family. And right now, we don't feel safe doing that. We will take trails, we will stay on back roads. It is my desire that if this ordinance is passed, that maybe when Mother's Day rolls around next year, we'll be able to take that trip downtown and around all on our bikes. Thank you very much for your time tonight and your support of this legislation. Thank you very much. That, that story brings it all home for many of us. I think that that's what we all desire, that access to anywhere in our city can be safely accessed by bike riding. And it also helps us from a variety of ways, environment being the first one. Mr. Kohler, you have uh, three minutes. Please share your first and last name in any organization that you represent. You have three minutes to share your comments or concerns related to tonight's ordinance regarding safe streets. Thank you, Council Member Mills. My name is Will Kaler. I live in Clintonville on uh, Weisheimer Road. And uh, like the previous speaker, I, uh, my family has one car and I ride everywhere I go. In fact, I go weeks without even getting in a car. Um, I, wanna, I have a four-year-old daughter and a wife and I wanna go around with them. And right now we don't feel it's safe to ride on High Street and some of the other roads with her. So. We stick to the trails and neighborhoods, and we pretty much go to businesses that we can get to on the trails and neighborhoods. So it's limiting what businesses we can go to because we want to ride our bikes. Um, so that's one point I'd like to make in favor of this ordinance. Um, it's one step to make our streets safer for my family. The other point is that uh, as an independent developer, I can live anywhere in the country I want to, and I've looked at San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Chicago, New York, and I keep coming back to Columbus. I'm really happy here. And I'm excited to see the improvements in biking. And that's one of the reasons that I'm staying in Columbus. Um, it's important for business that's trying to attract talent to Columbus and people like me that we have things like safe streets for biking. Uh, I have another friend that just moved to Brooklyn because they have better biking. So it cuts both ways. I think that we have room for improvement, but we're making the right strides, and I think this ordinance is a good step, and I'm in favor of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, you raised another point that I was gonna highlight in my closing comments. Um, I have had the opportunity to uh, travel, and everywhere I, I uh, travel, I try to ride a bike, do a bike tour, ride around the city is I think is one of the best ways to discover a city. I think you can see so much. And so from an economic development side of, of this ordinance, safe streets means people are out and about and they probably discover things on a bike that they would not in a car. Um, it's, it's just a different way of seeing the city and I hope that residents will discover um, some of our local businesses while on bike because I think there's a different opportunity to see things that you may not otherwise notice and decide to patronize. Um, and that includes whether you go by pedicab um, or Kogo or your own bicycle. I think there's plenty of opportunity to discover Columbus by bike. And I think, um, as you all know, this is a tremendously wonderful city. And I think discovering it by bike, we want to continue to encourage. Our next two speakers, David Hoffman, I want to say I'm, I'm struggling on two letters in the middle, so please forgive me. Um, if you'll please approach the podium and please share and correct your last name for me and any organization you represent, you have three minutes. And after uh, Mr. Hoffman, uh, I have Kirsten Carr. If you will please prepare to approach the podium and share your comments immediately following Mr. Hoffman. Mr. Hoffman, you have three minutes to share comments and concerns related to tonight's Safe Streets Ordinance. Thank you. 
Councilmember Mills. My name is David Homan, and um, I reside at 931 Montrose. Um, I, I commute from Bexley to downtown each day by bicycle year-round. I started that in 2007, and uh, I've logged over 1,000 round trips now um, commuting. And I calculate my avoided carbon footprint as well as um, time savings, money savings. Bikes have a lot of um, advantages um, health-wise. Um, in my life now, I'm really appreciative of the ability to ride. Um, I do believe that having a three-foot mandatory passing space will increase my safety on the road. And um, bikes are vulnerable road users. Um, we, we're just people getting around like other people in cars who are protected by their padded cells of the car. Um, we're not as protected. And uh, so I wear a helmet, it has lights, it has a mirror on it, it has a tail light. Um, these are all good things for visibility. It even has reflective stickers I put on there to be seen at night, and I put stickers like that on my bike too. So I take safety very seriously. Um, my safety, as well as that of other road users. Um, six feet is definitely better for the commercial vehicles too. I think one of the most scary ones to be passed by is a landscaper trailer. These guys come in with narrower trucks, uh, pickup trucks, hauling a really wide trailer and then the fenders are hanging off the side of that and they don't really know how wide they are and having a lot of space to be passed by something like that is especially useful and that's why i'm glad to have my mirror so i know who's coming up um, but i can only do so much to protect myself and then i'm depending on the other road users to see me the left hook is very um, scary too that's when someone doesn't see me they're coming at me and they turn left right in front of me i've had people I hit a car that, that um, pulled in front of me on a street and they said they didn't see me. I was striding, riding the other direction um, and this is in broad daylight. Um, and I don't ride right in the curb, I ride out a little bit so I can be seen. Um, it's called taking the lane, but it's, it's necessary for safety to um, be, be passed. People can go across the yellow, uh, but we, um, we do need to be able to be protected and seen. And if there's another way for the law enforcement to say there's an ordinance requiring this, then I'm all in favor of that uh, for, for the extra safety it gives us. Finally, I'd like to make one suggestion, which is um, to adopt a more proactive safety culture about our bikes on the streets. I'd like to see a way to um, track some of the near misses that happen rather than just reacting to the very bad accidents where someone loses their life or is sent to the hospital for months. Um, if we can track these other things where maybe the police are called, maybe they're not, um, we could definitely um, have more data to analyze and increase the safety of all these road users uh, like the bikes. And um, I will say also there are 55 people who rode their bikes to work at my office today and I'm just one of them so I worked out. <coughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ms. Carr, you have three minutes. Please share your first and last name in any organization you represent. You have three minutes to share your comments or questions related to tonight's ordinance. Good evening, Councilwoman Mills, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about the importance of bicycle safety and to express the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission support of the Safe Streets Ordinance. My name is Kirsten Carr, and I'm the Director of Planning and Environment here at Morpsey and transportation planning, funding, and safety are key functions uh, at our agency. When we conduct transportation planning, we look at our transportation system holistically so we can ensure that all users are safe. Every year, we analyze crash data around the region. We review and report on many safety statistics, including those that relate to bicyclists. Bike safety is very important to Morpsey, and I would like to highlight just a few statistics with you this evening. A five-year average of bicycle crashes found that 10% result in fatality or serious injury compared to 2.3% of all crashes, showing the greater vulnerability of bicyclists in a crash. Young people are at the highest risk of being involved in a crash. Bicyclists 10 to 15 years old comprise the most common age range, accounting for close to 17% of all bicyclists involved in a crash. And this ordinance, as mentioned earlier, is critical because it highlights the need of motorists to be aware of other users of the road. Nighttime is an especially dangerous time as a cyclist because of less visibility. Bicycle crashes that occur between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. account for only 16% of all crashes, but nearly 30% of all fatal and serious injury crashes. 
We are very happy to see that this ordinance will create best practices, bicycling law, increase bike parking, parking, and especially affirm that motorists must pass cyclists at a safe distance, and that it codifies that at three feet for automobiles and six feet for most commercial vehicles. This will keep cyclists safer, as failure to yield is the leading cause of injuries resulting from bicycle crashes. Drivers failing to yield account for 24% of serious injuries and 33% of minor injuries. It's significant that the city of Columbus demonstrates to the state legislator how vital these safety measures are, especially the three-foot passing rule. As Randy Bowman and others have mentioned, the cities of Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Toledo already have similar laws on the books. If the city of Columbus passes this law and joins its fellow cities, this will send a strong message to our legislature that we need to address this at a statewide level. 23 states and the District of Columbia already have three-foot passing laws. Councilwoman Mills, thank you again for your time, and I urge you to pa pass this important legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming down. I appreciate Morrissey's attention to this important ordinance. I believe that concludes all of our speaker slips for this evening. I want to thank uh, Leslie and Randy again for their hard work and all of the stakeholders who've been a part of getting us here today and send a message to encourage my fellow council members for their support on um, next Monday. I want to uh, take time also to share with many of you a couple important pieces. I want to strongly encourage those, regardless of laws or city codes on helmets, everyone should wear a bicycle helmet. I would be remiss if I let this opportunity pass by without stressing that. I also want to ask our bicyclists, those who make use of our trails, that they're multi-use trails to be careful and thoughtful and considerate of the walkers and the runners on our trails as well as we all try to enjoy the investments that we've made to continue to increase access and safe options and, and different uh, transportation alternatives for our citizens. I also want to again encourage folks to discover Columbus by bike. I think it is the, the best mode to, to see the city um, and to always wave if you see me out on my bike. Um, I'd appreciate a hello. Uh, and I want to uh, make sure our bicyclists do not antagonize our vehicles as, again, we are sharing the road. And if we want vehicles to be more open and receptive of bicyclists on the road to make sure that we don't antagonize or provoke it. Road rage happens on two wheels or four wheels. So let's all try to share the road so that we all can be safe. We all can reach our destination safely. And certainly whether it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or any day, I want to make sure our families are safe and can access our entire city by bike, car, or by feet. Um, thank you for those who continue to ride, um, who help our environment by riding. Please ride as much as you can. It truly helps all of us. And again, this uh, ordinance is another example of our city departments working together. I cannot say enough about that. Um, it is a great day when we can get a variety of departments together and talk about what the impact is for our safety department, the impact for service, impact when we talk about our investments in sidewalks, to talk about our environment. And this is just yet another example of how we can make our city even better when we all work together, whether we're in uh, City Hall or not. But I think our stakeholders had a good look at how we can work together when we all get together around something very important that's the safety of our citizens. So thank you all again for coming out this evening and participating in the hearing or viewing from your home. We're looking forward to passing legislation next Monday. We certainly appreciate the support. As I know, um, my other council members would like to hear from many of the stakeholders related to this legislation, but I am sure that they share my thoughts about whatever we can do to increase the safety of our city. Thank you again, and yay bikes. Have a good evening.